Hi, I'm Tessa West, and I'm a psychology professor at New York University. And I'm Kate Thorson, and in this video series, we're going to show you a range of topics, including how to structure, analyze, and interpret your data. Stay tuned! My name is Kate Thorson, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to go from an individual file to a person period pairwise file with your data using SPSS. Once you have the person period pairwise file, then you can analyze your longitudinal dyadic data. So the first thing I'm going to do is go over what an individual file will look like. In this file, we have one line per person that includes all of that person's data. So I'm going to go through the variables here. First we have ID, which is a unique ID number for each individual. Then we have dyad, which is a unique number for each dyad. So the two members of a dyad will have the same number here. Then we have our person variable. This is coded as one and two in this data set to note the two different members of a dyad. So one person in the dyad is one and the other is two. If you have indistinguishable dyads, then this distinction is arbitrary. So it doesn't matter who's coded as one or two. If you have distinguishable, then you might use your distinguishing factor here to create this variable. So for example, all of the males in the data set might be one and the females are all coded as two. Then I have a condition variable. Um, in this study, there was an experimental manipulation. And so this variable tells us what condition the participant was in. And then I have physiology data that were collected over time. In this case, I have pre-ejection period values that are reactivity scores for 10 different time points. So let's take a look at what that looks like in data view. So we have the IDs here, then the dyad number. You can see that 201 and 202 are both in dyad 1. Then I have my person variable that is just telling us, okay, this person's coded as 1, this person is 2. Again, I have indistinguishable dyads here, so this um, coding is arbitrary. Then I have a condition variable just specifying which condition the participant was in, and then I have my PEP reactivity values for 10 different time points. Now I'm going to move over to my SPSS syntax to go over how I will restructure this file. So the first thing I need to do is to take whatever data I have over time, in this case it's physiology, but it could be anything, and code all of the missing values as a specific number. So I don't want to leave them as just blank in my data set, like I have here. You can see I have blank values here. I want to actually put a, a number there so that I can still have those lines represented once I move into the next format. So the important thing here is just to choose a number that is not at all represented in your data set. In this case, 999 is not at all in my data, but choose something that wouldn't occur in your set. If 999 is possible, pick something else. Okay. So first I'm going to go through here and make all of those missing spots 999. Next thing I'm going to do is create a duplicate of my person variable, giving it a different name. And you'll see why we need this later. Now one important thing to do is to always check your output syntax and just make sure everything ran successfully. So I know everything's working here. Next thing I'm going to do is restructure my file to person period format. And before I do this, I just want to mention that this step is going to write over your data. So what I recommend doing is either saving a new copy here or making sure somewhere else on your computer you have saved an original copy of your individual file because this will change what your file looks like. So what I'm going to do here using the vars to cases step is to create one variable for my overtime data. So I'm going to make a new variable called pep react from these 10 different time points. What this is going to do is take all of my 10 time points that are represented here in a wide format and flip them so that they will be stacked on top of one another. So I'll have 10 lines going down in my file that represent person 201 and each line will be one time point of data. So it's going to flip my file from the wide format to the long format. So here I specify what that uh, new variable is going to be called. If I had another variable in my file that was also longitudinal and had the same number of time points, I could create that here. So let's imagine I measured satisfaction at those 10 time points. I could create that here. 
just putting in the values like so. Okay, but I don't have that in this file, so I'll just get rid of that. I want to call those different lines uh, time. So I'm choosing an index variable called time. This will give me a new variable that says one through 10 at these different lines of pep reactivity. Then I'm gonna keep all of my other variables that are time invariant. So none of these variables here change over the 10 time points, but I still want all of those in my file, and so I'm gonna include them on the keep line here. So let's go ahead and run this. So it looks like everything worked, and let's go ahead and see what that looks like in our data file. So if we go to variable, view first, we see the same variables we had before, condition, ID, dyad, person, partnum. Now our two new variables are time and pep react. So if we look at that here, we see that we have person 201 for these first 10 lines, then we have their 10 time points and their pep reactivity at those 10 time points. So we've shifted from the wide format now to the long format so that all of these values are stacked on top of one another. Okay, so immediately after I've done this, I'm gonna save this file as a person period file, just so that I do not lose my individual file. And I'm gonna save that. Okay, so now that I have my person period file and I've saved it, I wanna do two things uh, with my data before I move to the next step. First is I wanna check that I have the same number of time points of data for each person in the file. So I'm just gonna run a frequencies table here and you can see that I have 10 time points for each of the ID numbers listed here. And so everything checks out there. This is just a little sanity check before moving on to the next step. The next thing I wanna do is I want to mark the values that are missing and that I had previously coded as 999. Now I wanna actually make those missing so that they'll be blanks in my file. Again, if you use something other than 999 because that was meaningful in your file, you just wanna change that value here. So I'm gonna recode those. And if I looked back at my data file, I can see that anytime I have a blank now, it's actually listed as a blank and doesn't have 999 in the file anymore. Okay, so once I've done that, now I need to create a variable that we're calling OBS ID. This makes it so each dyad has a unique number for each time point. Um, and in this case, there are 10 unique numbers for each dyad because we have 10 time points of data. So I'm gonna compute this and I'll show you what that looks like. So if we go into the file here, we can see that we have person 201 at time point one and their OBS ID is one. Now that should be the same for the other member of the dyad. So if we're in dyad one, we know that the other person in that dyad is 202, dyad one, time point one, their OBS ID is also number one. If we move on to the next dyad, we can see that they have new numbers. So person 203 is dyad two. At time one, they are 11, and so is their partner, 204. At time one, they're also, uh, their OBS ID is 11. So once I have that, I can save this again as a person period file so that I have everything ready for the next step. And now what I'm gonna do is make this person period file into a person period pairwise file. So this has three main steps. First, what I'm gonna do is make a person A file. The second step will be to make a person B file. And then the third step is gonna be to merge those two files together. So in this first step, I'm gonna sort the cases by OBS ID and partnum. And then I'm gonna use cases to vars. And you'll see why, what that looks like in just a second here. So I'm gonna run that so I can check my output and see that everything ran. So if I look at my new file, I can see that in my variable view, I have three variables at the top. These are all the variables that are the same for the two members of the dyad. So OBS ID, dyad, and time. Then all of these variables that have the dot one after them represent the member of the dyad who I coded as one in the person and partnum variables and then all the variables that have that dot two after them represent the other person in the dyad that I coded as two in the person and partnum variables. And if I flip to data view, I can see that I have OBS ID, dyad, and time. And then I have the first person in the dyad, so 201 in this case, and then I have their data listed as condition, person, and their pep reactivity. 
Then I also have their partner in the dyad. So that's person 202, and I also have their condition, person number, and their pep reactivity. And you can see here, if I just look at ID 1, I have this listed for the people in the dyad that were coded as one on the person or partner variable. So it's actually only half of the dyad members because only half of them were coded as one for that variable. So I'm going to go ahead and save this file as my person A file or person one. You can call it whatever you want. And then I'm going to open back up my person period file. And in this case, I'm going to flip the coding of the part num variable so it's reverse. And then I'm basically going to run the same step as I did up here in order to get my person B file. So it looks like that ran. And then if I open this up, I can see here I have the same variables, uh, the three that are the same for the two dyad members, then the dot one and dot two variables. Now this time though, the dot one variable is for person 202. 204, et cetera, instead of in the previous file I had 201, 203, because those were the people in the dyad that were coded as one. So since I flipped that, now I have the other half of the dyad members represented as dot one and their partners represented as dot two. So I'm going to go ahead and save this file as my person B file. Now the next task for me to do is just to merge those two files together since I have both of them. So let's just see what data sets they are. So my person A is data set one and person B is data set two. So I'm just gonna add data set two to data set one here. So I'm gonna go ahead and run this. And I will save this file right after I run it as person period pairwise. So let's take a look at what this looks like. Again, same variables as we've seen before for the person A and person B files, but now I should have everyone represented as both a dot one and a dot two. So let's take a look at this here. We can see if I sort this ascending, I have person 201 here, then I have 202 and 203, and that will continue on. And then I have the partner's data as the dot two variables. So I have person 201 here, this is all of their data right here. Oops. And then I have their partner's data, 202, over on this side. So every line has information for one person and then also for their partner. So you could call this the actor data if you want to and the partner data over here. Or you could call it the receiver data right here and then the partner data right here. So just to make sure I've done everything right, I'm going to check my file in a couple different ways. First way, I'm going to just go ahead and sort the cases by OBS ID. And I'll take a look at what that is here. So I, I should make sure that I see one line per person per time point. So I'm going to put these two variables next to each other and move them over so that that's easy to see. Okay. So I have one line for person 201 at time point one, one line for 202 at time point one, and then we go to time point two. 201 has one line, 202 has one line. Another thing I can do here in order to check that I properly restructured my data is to take my time varying variables and put them next to each other. So I have pepreact.1, pepreact.2. I'm going to take both of these here, select them, and move them next to ID and time. And what I should see is sort of this checkerboard format. So for person 201, at time 1, their pep reactivity is negative 7. So I should see that then for their uh, partner's data, that should be the dot 2 value at time 1. And it is. So I have dot negative 7 here. And I also have negative seven here, right? Because it's their partner 202 at the same time point. And then you can also see the flip. So 202 at time one, their value is negative eight. And then if we look at when they are the partner, so for person 201, pepreact.2, that's also negative eight. So negative seven, negative seven, negative eight, negative eight. And I can look across and see this down the time points. Negative eight, negative eight, negative one, negative one. So I should be able to see this similar pattern as I go through the data if they're sorted in this way. 
Another thing that I can also do to check my data is just to run frequencies on the OBS ID. And I should only see that I have two values for each of these different OBS ID, right? Because these OBS IDs are unique numbers for each time point for each dyad. So I should just have the two members of the dyad for each one of these time points. And I can just scroll through and make sure that that is the case uh, for all of these different numbers within my data set. Okay, so once you've done this, I just recommend saving everything and saving the syntax you used in case you notice any errors that you may have made later. And now you have a file that is ready to have lagged variables created. So if you want to take your pep reactivity variables here and create lagged values uh, at different time points here, you can do that. Um, and this is helpful and useful if you're going to be running a stability and influence model on your data. One thing I also want to mention is Dave Kenny has a webinar online that uses an R program in order to restructure your data. And this would be particularly helpful if you have a lot of different variables in your data set. So we will put a link to the next webinar for lagging your variables and a link to uh, Dave's webinar under our video. So take a look at that. We're also posting the syntax and these data files on our website along with this video so that you can uh, practice on these files if you're interested. Thanks for watching.